Hey, Jody here. In this week's video, we're talking about edge joints and edge welds. So we're going to be welding on some aluminum, stainless steel, and carbon steel. Uh, as thick as about an eighth of an inch thick, that's about 3.2 millimeters, down to as thin as about 50 thousandths thick, just a little over a millimeter thick. So edge, edge welds and edge joints, let's do it. All right, first off, we're going to run a bead on the edge of some aluminum. And a couple of real good examples of where this would be required would be repairing an aluminum boat prop or uh, an air-cooled fin on an, on an air-cooled motor that was snapped off or something where you would build it up and then blend it back down to sort of close to original dimension. Now watch while I, while I add filler rod here, you might notice I'm backing up as well as lengthening the arc a little bit. And that does two things. Number one, I don't have to clean electrodes very often because I'm pulling the arc length. When, I, when I'm adding filler metal, that puddle height is growing, but I'm, I'm lengthening the arc length so I don't duff the electrode. The other thing it does is lets me build up the bead a little bit higher, pushing a little rod in there and getting that electrode out of the way. And what I'm trying to do here is build up height. I don't wanna, I don't wanna wrap that bead all the way around and not, not make any progress in the height. Sometimes it might take two or three or four passes or many more to do what you need to do. Up next is stainless steel. Now this is a really good example of a super common operation in aerospace maintenance, just dimensional restoration. These things were worn. These little air seals were worn beyond serviceable limits. Two or three beads of Inconel 625 put on there. They'll be sent to a grinder to be ground down to serviceable tolerances, and then they'll be good to go again. And so it's very much like just running a bead or several beads down the edge of a piece of sheet metal. And so for, if you want to get some practice for that, there's no better practice than just running beads down the edge of as thin as, as, thin as stainless as you can handle. Now this is not quite thin enough for that type of practice. It's 050. You'd want to, you'd want to work your way down to something like 032. Uh, but it's, good, it's a good place to start. In fact, a better place to start would be even something thicker if you haven't ever done this kind of thing. But you can see it's not taking much amperage. So there's only a, like a, a window of five or 10 amps here, you know, being either too cold or too hot. And uh, it's really good practice for heat control and working that foot pedal. 15 amps, that's all it took to run the bead down the edge of that thing. So now I'm gonna join two pieces of them. This is much easier than running a bead down one. Um, so in order to do this, anytime you're welding, joining two pieces together in an edge joint like this, you definitely want some tacks on there because if they ever, distort and split apart, you're, you're in, in for a bad day. So I got several tacks on there and we'll just run a bead down the edge of this. I'm not really sure the amperage this took, but it wasn't much, maybe 45, something like that. Again, stainless steel being not very thermally conductive, heat tends to build up and takes usually in most situations only about two thirds the amperage that carbon steel takes. In this case, on the edge, I think maybe even less than that. I don't have any heat sinks or chill blocks on this particular piece here. Things are going okay. When you add, when you add uh, heat sinks or chill blocks, sometimes you do need more amperage. It can really help, though, as far as, as, far as trapping that argon gas as well as just he a heat sink. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to clamp those uh, aluminum blocks to this thing and run this, this bead all the way, or most of the way anyway, so that you can see a difference in that first couple of inches and see how it changes as I hit the chill block. Not only is it going to pull heat out, but it's going to sort of trap some argon gas and you know keep it from just going away. So we'll get a quick tack on the end here. And anytime you're tacking the very end of stainless, it's not a bad idea to let it to tack it and then let it cool for a few seconds instead of just move on. Now production requirements are one thing, but what happens is usually it takes you a second or two to dab rod in there and heat can kind of build up. So if you just kind of let it let it heat dissipate a little bit, things go better. You can see how the argon sort of gets split on an edge like this. So when I go over those chill blocks, you'll see a difference in discoloration. Uh, not only from it pulling the heat out, but from it just sort of holding the argon in place. So it's, you know, make going to the effort sometimes of having chill blocks and chill bars is a, a very good thing. It's very much worthwhile most of the time. 
I don't know if you can tell right now, but I'll show a close-up in just a second. Right there, it's, it's kind of gray. And then as I get over the chill bars, the discoloration gets a lot shinier, a lot better. For certain applications, filler metal might not be required. It just all depends on the application. A good example might be some kitchenware where the, the surface finish of a, of a stainless steel kitchen table was more important than, you know, having a whole lot of filler metal holding things together. Doesn't take much amperage to, to fuse two pieces together like that. This is a, a swirler. Uh, it's an aircraft engine part, and there's a whole lot more beads on there than we would normally put on there because I was using it to set up a program. But this is a common, common operation. Just build it up with weld metal and then have it machined back down to serviceable dimensions. So I'm going to do one little run on this piece of tubing here. And you see I'm using aluminum foil as sort of a little heat sink. I've got many, many layers on the outside wrapped around there tight. Also some stuffed in the inside, again, to sort of, sort of act as a dam to trap argon gas to keep it from just flowing freely through that thing. Because sometimes it can really, with the heat and everything, it can set up a venturi sort of like a chimney effect and really pull your gas away. Now let's talk about filler metal addition angle. You know, on a job like this, all those textbook correct filler metal angles go right out the window because you know if you're going to weld something round like this you're going to you're going to right away be incorrect or improper filler metal angle and what you find out pretty quickly is if you if you if you do it right and sort of you know don't just stab the filler metal in there but sort of uh, nice and easily feed it in it's very forgiving as far as which angles you can make work right here it's it's pretty good but in a minute, I'm going to be adding backwards sort of into the back of the puddle. Still works. In fact, I have found for edge buildup, sometimes it works a lot better. Adding the rod to the back of the puddle and using sort of a trailing angle, especially for shielding the puddle for subsequent passes. More than one way to skin a cat. This looks completely wrong, adding filler metal like this, but hey, whatever works. So the foil on the inside did a really good job of sort of holding argon in place. Foil on the outside provided some little slight heat sink. Better than not having it. Another thing about edge welds like this is that if, you're, if your TIG welder is capable of pulse settings in the higher ranges, I really like the rule of 33 for edge welds. And that means 33 pulses a second, 33% pulse time, 33% background. Just a really easy number to remember. It might not be the best for all applications, but it's a great starting place. It can save you some time. I just run a bead down the edge here of some. This is 120 thousandths, 3 millimeter thick, cold rolled steel. And you can see it takes about roughly half the amperage as what the thickness of the metal is in thousandths of an inch. 120 thousands 60 amps that's just a rule of thumb for carbon steel and this is running down the edge of some of that same material using 50 pulses a second started started out with the rule of 33 and increased to 50 and using the fupa 12 cup for better shielding worked out great well that's it for edge joints and edge welds if you'd like to learn more about some of the products that i use in this video all you have to do is go to my store at weldmonger.com that is how I support these videos. Thanks for watching.